One of the most basic commands for troubleshooting in Ubuntu server is going to be dmessage, the driver message or display message command. Now we can see a little bit more information about dmessage by typing man dmessage and you can see that it's going to print or control the kernel ring buffer. Okay, the kernel is the, the base, the foundation of the Linux system, the Linux kernel. And at boot, you're going to have a lot of hardware initializing and starting up, and dmessage is going to show us a little bit more about what's going on with that hardware. Now, you can easily print dmessage using the dmessage command, but there's a lot of output, and so you're not going to be able to see it all. Instead, you're going to need to run it through a pager, and I will assume that you're already familiar with pagers, and so I won't go into explaining it. Uh, D message pipe less is going to uh, stick this output into the less pager and that will enable us to scroll up and scroll down within all of this output. Now as I scroll down here you can see exactly how much output there is. There's a lot. And the time, the numbers that you see here, which are increasing, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, 0.4, you can see it going up. Uh, those are going to be seconds after boot. So D message is showing you what's happening, and it's giving you seconds after boot. So seven seconds after boot, if you look at the last line, 7.17533, four seconds after boot, then it initialized the Plymouth Splash main process, okay? Now, what dmessage is helpful for is if you know you're having a problem with a particular piece of hardware or an interface, you can search for it. So we're gonna go ahead here and use Q to quit out of the last pager. And I'll show you this example. We'll do dmessage pipe grep and then the i option which just means it's going to ignore uppercase lowercase and then we'll search for eth0 which is our network interface now again i'm assuming you're familiar with what grep is going to do here but it's going to pull out the information that we specify so here we don't have to look at the entire d message output which again there's a lot and even when you stick it on a pager like less there's a lot of output. Usually when I use dmessage, I'm searching for something. I have a network error. I have some sort of PCI error. I have some specific hardware that I'm interested in. In this case, I'm pulling the information uh, for ETH0. And you can see here on ETH0, 0, 0 0.8 seconds, so not quite one full second after boot, you can see the first message related to ETH0 comes in. Uh, just after that, you can see uh, it uh, yet again has some output there, Intel Pro 1000 network connection, 4.3 seconds after boot. Uh, you can see link is up, 1000 megabits per second, full duplex flow control, uh, 4.36, a little bit after that, link is not ready, and then right after that, 4.36 ETH0, link becomes ready. Uh, you're really digging into the system at this point and you're seeing how the hardware and the drivers are interacting with the kernel. So you are getting down to a foundational level here. Dmessage is going to be used a lot in troubleshooting, so get familiar with it. And uh, we'll just do another example here. You know, dmessage uh, pipe, again, I like to use uh, grep with the I option so that it ignores the case, whether it's uppercase, lowercase, or whatever I type, it's going to ignore it. And uh, USB. So here we can see information related to USB devices. And again, this just enables us to take a closer look at dmessage. We don't have to use a pager. More often than not, you're going to be using dmessage with grep. And uh, you're not going to be looking through the entire, uh, you know, dmessage log. Uh, now, you can clear it using dmessage and then the C option. Uh, pardon me. dmessage and the C option. You're going to have to have root privileges to do that. This is going to clear out the dmessage information from memory. However, um, it is going to, so now if we type in D message, you can see there's no output because it just cleared all of it. it, printed it and it cleared it. So all of that information that was in there has been cleared. Uh, however, that information is not lost. If you would like to get back to the information, 
uh, that you have cleared, it is saved in a log file. It's stored in var log kern dot log. So var log kern dot log. We can um, uh, we can concatenate that if we would like to. So we can do cat var log kern dot log. This is going to have our D messages in here. And we're going to go ahead and pipe that to a pager. And so we can see our information here uh, in that file there. Now, um, you, you're going to have a lot of information in there. You can see this goes all the way back to the 16th. Today is July 20th. So you can say, uh, see here that I have a lot of information in the kernel log. It's going to show all of those D messages so that, again, uh, if I do not have them, uh, because I cleared the buffer or whatever, I can go back to look at previous boots and previous D messages as well. So, you know, it would be very easy for you to concatenate var log kern dot log, and then you could pipe grep ignore the case and say we just want July 20th. Uh, I need to put that in quotes. So say that I just want July 20th. Here it's just printing out information from July 20th. So you can specify a particular day. Uh, you can specify particular hardware, as I've shown you with ETH0 or USB, uh, so that you can take a closer look at D message.